It's the NFL on EA Sports, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Steelers and the Cardinals, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Valley of the Sun at State Farm Stadium here in Glendale. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals, they're set to do battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator said right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 29. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. So out come the Cardinals and their offense in great starting field position. And they'll be led out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And what he's thinking about right now is first down, let's find a way to make a big play. Because when you get a sudden change situation, that defense has to rush onto the field unexpectedly, you might catch them having a defensive breakdown or not quite prepared. And it was really sudden after the first play picked off. On first down, Metcalf, and he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Pretty effective run there, now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your own line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. First carry of the ball game now. It's C.J. Anderson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. That was first and 10 at the 11. Now Warner. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he 
He's out at the six. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Now Warner. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Warner from the gun. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. And now out is the Cardinal field goal team here. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. They have a bottom line. They wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Just outside the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he'll need to find a way to shrug off the opening drive, if you can even call it a drive. One play and an interception, so he's got to forget that. I know that in today's football, we have a good number of coaches who don't look at time of possession the way that the old school guys did. But there's still a place for it. I think that on this drive, after having thrown that interception, they're going to want to eat up a little bit more clock and run some offense and give their defense a little bit of a break. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers putting their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up for him. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. The Steelers send out their punter now. Standing just about on his own goal line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Cardinals will take over first and 10. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. And he'll get 
get this up to about the 30. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Working with a second and three. Here's Warner. He finds Smith out of the backfield. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S, ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in the meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before? Oh, we got it. We got it. After a few play, the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Warner. And oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Out of the gun, here's Warner. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Second down and three, ball on the seven. To throw Warner. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the Cardinals now adding on to their lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Prater for the extra point. And the lead grows to 10 nothing. A drive there of just four plays. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown.
So an early 10 nothing lead for him now as they kick it away. Taking in at the three. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And now out come the Steelers. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. to Harris to begin the drive. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Got a man, that's Ward. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. to throw. Bradshaw. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. They wind up losing eight on the sack there. And it's second down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were a man. And each man did his job. And that looked like vintage old school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other. And they just locked people down. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Looking to throw. Bradshaw. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating from the gun, Bradshaw. On the right side, this is Miller. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tab and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a give, right side, Metcalf. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding off. 
That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, he can't hold them. Following the penalty, Anderson. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers that can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Still 15 yards to go, second down. From the gun, it's a give to Anderson. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Quarter to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Gray. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. A play fake. Now Warner. He finds his man complete. It's Gray. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They give it to Anderson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. From the pistol, they run with Anderson. And he's going to get forward for about five, but that may be coming back. What say you, Mr. Referee? Hey, do it. Hey, just threw the flag. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot, but they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. From the gun, Warner, and his throw here is incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Warner, he's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that is caught by the back judge right there to say incomplete. Thus far, they have been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. Prater's kick is good. And push the lead up to 13 to nothing. 
No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement. Down on the scoreboard, maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Harris starts to drive on the ground. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. When you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Looking to throw. Bradshaw. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. First half of football. Go on. Go on. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman with a highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31 yard line. Yeah. Now, a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Now a hit and a loose football. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. That's our ball. Yeah. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I get the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change yeah, the I'm game. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. And you love that they have that attitude, but your point is so well taken. What do you have to do? First and foremost, and now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that challenge, a successful one. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, 
That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Operating from the gun. Warner. He's got Smith here. A gain of six there on first. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Second down at four. Back to throw. Warner. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 40. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. On first and 10, Warner. Complete, Smith has it. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I like the thought process, I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're gonna run that drag route, you've gotta put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch. He finds his man complete, it's great. And they're gonna have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 23. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that's going to make this a 16-0 ball game. So he remains perfect. Three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is. And as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. to go in the half as the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And no reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Steelers. And not much went right in those first two quarters. You can see the numbers on the ground there. Not a whole lot to write home about so far. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked as they have the lead through two quarters of play. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Cards with the lead, and they will get this football first as the second half gets started. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Cardinals ready to go here to start the third quarter. It's Warner. Complete here to the right to Bolden. Brandon, as you saw, they went play action there, and they're going to drag the receiver from left to right across the field and hope to find a gap to throw the ball to it. Not there. Excellent job defensively, and no run after the catch. On second down now, it's Anderson. Anderson a first down and more. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. They run again on first down, Anderson. And this one's gonna go the wrong way. Losing yardage back oh, at the 42. Yeah. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is though? You've gotta win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Behind the chain, second and 12. He'll keep it himself. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. On third down, Warner. And a throw there going to be incomplete. So good work there on the defensive side for the first drive of the second half. Yeah, and until their offense can get into rhythm, their defensive players and staff have got to say to themselves, we've got to make it work. We've got to stand in here and make sure nothing else happens until our guys start moving the ball. Here comes the Cardinals punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offense offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Six yards left on second down. Looking to throw, Bradshaw. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. 
picked off at the 33. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. And right about now, you start to think, and maybe they're starting to think, gosh, maybe points aren't going to happen for us in this game. Well, it's a thought that is worth having because so far in this game, this defense has not just had the upper hand. They've appeared to be a step ahead, maybe even two steps, to everything they've done. They've had an answer for everything this offense has thrown at them. The football going back over to Arizona now. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. On second down, Warner. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Quarterback in 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Back to throw, Warner. And that is incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. So out comes the field goal team once more. Prater's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead to three scores now at 19 never. So just three points there, but that important in the grand scheme of things is it's now a three-score lead. And to now, the other guys haven't shown that they can do anything offensively, so just take the points, keep adding that cushion, and let your defense win you the football game. Send it away following the main field goal. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. Interesting stat line right now. Technically, he's completed four passes, two to his team and then two to the wrong team. It makes you wonder what he's seeing downfield because he has completed two passes to his own team, but the interceptions are troubling. Is he going through the wrong reads, the wrong progressions? Is he getting fooled by defenses? They've got to figure that out over the sidelines, working on that surface pro to see what they see. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's going to walk one deep left side here. A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. And that looked almost to be a case of, you know, a quarterback saying, hey, I'm going to throw this as far as I can and hope you run under it. Mission accomplished. And that might be just what they needed to get back in this game. Sometimes you need a big play to shake things up. Get a little life in your sideline. Get everyone believing again. And they got it there in a big way. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. They'll try the right side with Harris. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Not quite the success they had last play. This one goes for three yards. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. 
Again, it's Harris on second down. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. Boswell's kick is good. And that'll get the deficit back to 16. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get him back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now a first down throw, Warner. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Gray. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. To throw on second down. Warner. It's caught. Smith. <laughs> Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Handoff comes to Anderson. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's Cardinal football. They're also out in front of the scoreboard as we get set for the fourth. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw. Warner. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. The Cardinals on third down. 
Just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Warner. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And the punt team on now as this one set away. So possession goes over Let's here go. on Let's the go. punt. Go. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. and 10. Bradshaw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. To throw again. Bradshaw. And this is going to be incomplete. But so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They forced incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? And the Steelers on third down. Not good, 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 10. From the gun, Bradshaw. Hit as he throws and the ball is out. It's a live football. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away Let's and go, incomplete. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations teams get the ball back and that miracle does occur so they can't let that dream go just yet they have to get stout on defense here yeah right now really hoping for a turnover and the Cardinals are going to have a first and goal with some good running there gets them down to about the two yard line knock it on the door well it is our business to analyze what we saw out there on that play I saw a defense staying in base not taking a chance not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back that's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now a play fake here on first down. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. 
This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Operating from the gun, Warner. Smith catches left side. A great job to hold him to just a yard there. Now it's fourth and goal. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. And now out is the Cardinal field goal team here. This to make it a three-score game late. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that will make this now a 19-point advantage. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. Well, you know, normally I get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. just outside the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here we go. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. There you go. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Throwing to start the drive. Bradshaw. Throw left side, caught here by Ward. 